Yeah, this is Billiam, and I finally feel comfortable saying I live in Florida because I've wrestled an alligator. Wow, what a good guy. I've lived just outside Disney World and all of the surrounding theme parks for like the past six years. I used to have an annual pass to Disney, but honestly, in my opinion, I think going to the park has just gotten too expensive. It's just not worth it. I don't even have to pay that much to travel there or to stay in a hotel. But the cost of a ticket for a single day at a single Universal or Disney park ranges anywhere from $109 to $160. On top of parking! Central Florida is a tourist hub that gets up to 75 million visitors a year, and it's estimated Disney's presence adds up to $40 billion annually to the state's economy. And right outside the park, there's this whole ecosystem of tourist traps. Just outside Disney, just outside Universal and SeaWorld, accompanied by my GF Savannah, who spent years working in entertainment at Universal. We're exploring the parts of our backyard we typically avoid. From presidential wax figures that have been melting for 60 years, a park with over 200 dinosaurs, and the grotesque concrete wonders off the Central Florida Highway. This is a guide to every single tourist trap outside Walt Disney World. When you find yourself in Florida, you gotta know there's an alligator in every single body of water. And they may be cute and cuddly, but you best be prepared. Those alligators, they wanna get you. They want to steal your information and your credit card. It happened to me, and that's why I'm thankful to today's sponsor, Aura. Check out what happens when I Google myself. Um, that just happened. There's too much info about me. And did you know that data brokers can and will sell your information to little creepo gators? Scammers and hackers that want to target you. They'll snatch anything their jaws can clamp down on. Government name, relatives, address. Like a flashlight in the swamp illuminating an alligator. Aura exposes those creeps. It shows me who's selling my data and automatically submits opt-out requests. Protecting me not only from spam emails, but phone calls as well. Aura also includes includes a ton of features like an antivirus and a VPN, a password manager, and identity theft insurance. No need for different apps, this one does it all. All for one affordable price. Once set up, Aura is always on, constantly doing the hard work of keeping my information safe. That way I can solely focus on all of the real alligators in my backyard trying to steal my wallet in real life. I value my privacy and I value yours, so click the link in the description or go to Aura.com slash Billiam to start your two-week free trial. Thank you so much. Back to the video. And we begin with a park that is six years older than the original Disneyland Park in California itself. This is Gatorland. They'll tell you they're in Orlando, but this is Kiss Me, Florida. Gatorland's iconic concrete gator head entrance stands tall only 20 minutes from Disney's Magic Kingdom. Over 110 acres, over 2,000 crocodilians and gators. The sheer number of alligators here is indescribable. Your average Florida pool right here. Some are the size of dinosaurs and others are the size of much smaller dinosaurs. I immediately spotted the massive Nile crocodile in the pond swimming right under the DJ. He was so cool. The DJ, I mean. That crocodile is just one of many at Gatorland who follow in the legacy of the park's first major attraction, Bone Crusher, who was claimed to be the largest American crocodile in captivity. No one even challenged it. This is Bone Crusher 2, Bone Crusher's son. Ricardo the Cuban Crocodile, Gatorland's evil genius. This Latin <laughs> lover has not one but two girlfriends. <gasps> or should we say accomplices? Guys, how do you think Ricardo the evil genius pulled off having two girlfriends? <laughs> Comment below. And why not subscribe? I'm a big fan of the American Crocodile, a lesser known Floridian who has been making a population comeback right alongside their gator cousins. Look at this torpedo shape. The thing about the crocodile is, is once they can push off the one end of the pool, they can go upwards of 70 miles an hour. Holy shit. It's just like <laughs> Luckily, there's not usually a flat wall like that in nature. At its heart, the park is a specialized zoo. The swamp of the white gator. Is it this way? Yeah. 
Oh. And not only do they have albino gators, but the only leucistic gators in captivity. They're white, but have more of a blue hue rather than a red hue. While there is a peaceful breeding marsh, the pond next to the feeding show is a jamboree. When things got started, the gators were all quickly bullied and dominated by that massive Nile crocodile, whose name is in fact Lyle. I really thought this guy was toast. The script really leans into the redneck kitsch present all over the park. I'm going to report Gatorland to Twitch. On this exact spot on the afternoon of April 27th, 1968, a husband paid dearly for his short-lived victory. A marital argument was won by the husband, and he was killed for it. And if you don't get these signs, you've obviously never been married. Damn, my wife humor at Gatorland. I love how like there's all this like mystique about Disney hiding supposed deaths at their park. <laughs> They're like, no, <laughs> you like, dead. Awesome. That's fucking <laughs> awesome. Take a walk on the wild side. Wild, Wild birds are all over the property and enclosures hold Florida animals like flamingo, bobcats, and panthers, all of which I love to look at. Well, you belong at Gatorland. Over 2,000 gators, but only one coot. At one point during the 1980s, after pioneering captive gator breeding techniques with scientists at the University of Florida, Gatorland announced that it would begin farming and harvesting its gators. But in the past few years, Gatorland has really adopted a conservation first image. The park rescues nuisance alligators who would have been executed by the state. I used to visit an alligator behind a FedEx. I haven't seen him in a while. I like to think he's been brought to Gatorland. Alongside other rescues, such as Jolene. Jolene is missing the top half of her jaw, but she's become an icon in her new home. Love the photo, Jolene. Gatorland offers deals for Florida residents, but basic admission is $34.99. We paid $41.99 for a package, but additional premiums include rock climbing, the zip line, off-road monster trucking, gator feeding the train, and of course, encounters with the animals. Going to SeaWorld costs like $100 to $140 a day, and swimming with dolphins at SeaWorld's Discovery Cove costs $300. Hundred dollars. I got to wrestle an alligator for like a tenth of the cost, and I was the tallest person doing it. The rest were little children. And it was wrestling, not just sitting on a back of an alligator for a photo op. I wrestled that alligator. They had taped the little guy's jaws shut. I'm a big guy. I'm a clumsy guy. I was worried about squishing this little creature. I got my picture and I wanted to get off immediately. It was the end of his shift. But the guy at Gatorland thought I was scared. They sell new underwear and pants in the gift shop, bro. New underwear? New pants? I didn't pee my pants. You peed your pants. You're the guy who has to work with this gator. I wasn't scared of the gator at Gatorland, guys. His shift was almost over. And you know what? I love my photo and frame that cost an extra $26.61. Overall, if you like alligators, like I do, it's a pretty solid experience, but it's not the only alligator experience. Wow, this is concrete, baby. It's a concrete gator, not the largest concrete gator but it's a good concrete gator. I'm here at Jungle Adventures in Christmas, Florida, about an hour east from Walt Disney World. Built in 1989, Swampy here is the largest concrete alligator in the world, and Gatorland sued them because of it. A judge ordered the entrance in the park to be moved from the mouth, identifying that as Gatorland's trademark, but the 200-foot concrete alligator has laid here ever since. Jungle Adventures isn't the first to be sued by Gatorland. Alligatorland changed its name to Jungle Land Zoo and featured a gargantuan concrete alligator eating a truck. But that park was ultimately closed for animal abuse violations. Minutes from Disney's Magic Kingdom, US 192 used to be filled with these kinds of roadside wonders. One attraction from the 1980s that still stands is a classic of corporate American metropolitan areas medieval times. Let your imagination take you to medieval times. Dinner and toast. A live dinner show that takes you back in time to experience a jousting tournament, amongst other medieval-themed performances. The first location, Orlando Castle, still stands in Kissimmee, Florida, but the medieval village that opened alongside the park is no longer in operation, despite standing. Inside, we picked up our tickets and were told to cheer for the Red Knight. Raise your voices once again for the Yellow Knight! Yeah. 
The host corralled us in the gift shop before entering the stadium. It turns out you get the Red Knight if you're the last party to enter. Which is probably why our seats were very bad. Nonetheless, the Knights all came out, including our champion, the Red Knight. Oh, there he is. Handsome. Handsome fella. Handsome. And then came the Queen. Your Majesty. All hail the Queen. Her horse shot right in front of these people. Yes, Queen, that's so medieval. Because it's medieval times, there is no silverware. All hands, tomato soup, garlic bread, a half chicken. It's made in bulk and remarkably edible. But that baked potato tasted like something I cooked when I was depressed. If you know someone in the medieval times kitchen, please reach out. And no one else but us ate the eclair. I'm a little worried. The horses were spectacular. They have the one girl with the horse who prances, and holy shit, the falconer, that's a real bird. It flew all around the stadium and posed perfectly in front of this crowd of adoring tourists. Look at him, under the spotlight, terrified and unaware. The Red Knight was throwing roses, and I caught the second one. That was pretty cool. Oh, you got it, Billy! <laughs> Thank you, ladies. The show shines with the jousting and fight choreography, and here comes the Red Knight. Turn around! <laughs> behind you! <laughs> Who not only got his ass kicked once, but he came back out for a second chance at it all, and he got his ass kicked again. <laughs> me, I guess. I was genuinely impressed with the whole presentation, though the story was pretty hard to follow from where we sat. I just had to crane my neck to see anything, and so much of the action happened in like the opposite corner of the stadium. But you probably feel that way if you get stuck in any of the corners. The baseline price for a night with these nights, including the meal, is $68 per person. Vegan and vegetarian options are available, but we found a coupon for almost $15 off. Disney only has one dinner show, the Hoop Dee Doo Musical Review, which also costs around $70 for an adult meal. But the show is not of the same scale as Medieval Times at all. Overall, it's worth a trip going at least one time, bring some good friends, show up early, drinks do cost extra, but you can always like hit the pen in the car before you go inside. My lords, my ladies, be treated like royalty on your birthday this year. Medieval times used to be one of many attractions on this road. This religious help center in a castle used to be the Haunted Mansion. No affiliation with the Disney ride. Splendid China was a park that featured miniature models celebrating Chinese culture and iconography, but it was rumored to be a propaganda front for the Chinese Communist Party. Now it's a Margaritaville resort, which is rumored to be a propaganda front for the American Capitalist Party, and flip-flops, and being able to enjoy a cheeseburger instead of seafood when you're a sailor and in port. The Xanadu houses showcased the homes of the future built from foam and stuff, but by the early 1990s, it was all outdated and finally demolished in the late 2000s. The highway still offers a facade of kitschy wonder. This one big American flag building is Machine Gun USA. We thought about going, but it would have been more than a ticket to Disney World. That just disqualifies it from this list. Today, 192's craziest roadside buildings are the gift shops. Massive, grotesque wonders of roadside America, including the most iconic gift shop in the area, where Savannah and I tourist it up. I look like I'm also naked, but I have, it's low, it's low. I am not topless in front of, oh, like 192. <laughs> I'm not topless. I am. But where are we? Here we are at the wizard. The wizard. The wizard. The wizard. <gasps> the wizard. Here we are at the Magic Castle gift shop. As reported by the Orlando Sentinel, the stores around here are patrolled by plain clothes Disney representatives, making sure no bootleg product slips in with the genuine wholesale merchandise. The wizard has a castle built on the inside, but you know what's cooler than that? Another, Another wizard. wizard. Hey, you know what's cooler than even that? <gasps> mermaid! mermaid! This crazy mermaid on US 192 is also owned by the same people who own the wizard. Look at this beautiful American Eagle. The merchandise is indeed discounted. Most of these stores have the same stuff and are owned by the same company. I'd die for this. I'd die for US 192. 
of being in this building makes me feel. Savannah's rhinestone Orlando shirt was only $14, and my embroidered Orlando shirt was $11.99. Disney shirts were priced similarly, which you will not find at the parks. Surrender the booty. Something felt a little off about these keychains, though. You have a purple Stitch, Wario Mario, Olaf's new brother, oof, stupid Koopa Mario, Kawaii Stitch, and or else. As in, don't snitch to Disney, or else I will find you. And right down the road, we have the world's biggest orange, Orange World, which has been around since 1973. It's one of the first roadside gift shops in Florida to take advantage of Disney World's presence. <laughs> Just a lemon head in an orange world. The gift shop on the inside has recently been damaged in a fire, but they're still selling fruit on the outside and it was so good. We got a whole bag of Red Naval oranges for like $10 and they were so good. We scanned them in our computer printer scanner because they tasted so good and were so juicy. We scanned them at 300 DPI. They were so good and so juicy. Uh. We got some Red Navels. They were amazing. They were actually so good. Orange World, high recommendation. Honestly, number one spot on this road right yeah, now. Yeah, but they don't have any rides, <laughs> just oranges. Leaving the gift shops just down the road from Orange World, we have Old Town. This is where Little Nas X was talking about. Ain't that that song? Built in the 1980s, Old Town follows in Disney's footsteps of building a nostalgic Main Street with shopping and dining, albeit with a more Florida twang. Florida. Old Town's attractions include a very notable haunted house, which we might go to in a video about like haunted Florida stuff. And the arcade features a lot of vintage games, including one of the most f***ed up things I've ever seen. The f is you put a quarter in and you get to execute this man. It's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Like, you get to execute him. You know, it's Old Town. Old ways, Old Town. They're still doing this shit. Their tagline is quirky and cool. Cause they're quirky and cool. Quirky, cool? I'm Old Town. What is, what is quirky about you and what is cool? Quirky about me? Everything. Cool? Mm, everything! <laughs> and they have the longest running classic car show in America, but we came on the wrong day and they had all new cars. Holy shit, man. Whoa. That's cool. Look at the Lambos or whatever they're called. Yeah, get out of here. But they weren't all cool cars. Some of them were really quirky. Well, get the Evangelion car, get the Evangelion car. Everything's Evangelion. Are you getting it? Yes. The biggest draw at Old Town is the year round carnival style attraction, Fun Spot. If you don't feel like you're gonna die on Disney rides, this is where you come. Which costs $70 a day to ride all day, but walking the grounds is free and you can pay on a per ride basis, which is great. It's one of two Fun Spot locations in the area, but the location at Old Town also has vintage attractions because it's supposed to be old. So it's just so old here. It's just really old. It's just old town. We paid $15 per ticket for the vintage Italian Ferris wheel, which opened in April, 2019. It sits near the new old town entrance. Oh my God. Oh. You okay? Yeah. I'm terrified of heights. And when we stopped at the top, I started to feel a little lightheaded. Can't handle five minutes. It's a lot. It's a lot. There's like wind blowing. Yeah, we still are rocking a little bit. Oh man. I'm a it's like a cradle. Fall asleep. No. <laughs> We're rock a bye, baby, in the treetops. That's oh, where we are. God, I feel like I'm gonna fall asleep and then start falling. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when you have those feelings. I don't want that here. Although it gave a stunning view of US 192, the beautiful Lane Max Highway of my consumerist dreams. The Vomitron? Are you kidding don't me? Don't sit under that. Are you kidding me? The Vomitron? That. There they, are people on both ends. Yeah, and it's gonna come out of both ends too. Oh my god. 
<laughs> I'm not doing that ever in my life. As of 2024, Old Town is probably 192's biggest attraction. Universal City Walk and Disney Springs are also free shopping and dining districts in the area, but City Walk makes you pay for parking sometimes, and neither one offer as many attractions. Disney Springs has a hot air balloon ride, which costs $30 per person, as well as the classic Italian Amphicar tours. They drive on land and in the water. It costs $125 per ride, but that cost can be split between up to four people. Old Town is worth going to if you're looking for something to do. I appreciate the vintage attractions and you can really control how much you wanna spend. To get to our next location, we leave US 192 and drive an hour west of the Magic Kingdom down the most dangerous highway in America, I-4, along which you may see some dinosaurs peeking out of our next attraction. Dinosaur World in Plant City, Florida. Dinosaurs still existed. They would in fact be just like hiding right behind a highway like this. And it would not be the other dinosaurs killing them. It would be the cars. They're like, oh, f a semi truck. And he's like, <laughs> I'm the semi truck of the Jurassic. Here we were joined by Comic Drake, who just so happened to be in town for a video he was making. So I suggested he meet up with us on this adventure. Drake was very nice to offer himself up to be a camera because he knew Savannah and I wouldn't be getting a lot of like screen time together in this project. We did not make him be a cameraman, I swear to God. Hey, Stop that. So, uh, Billy, I didn't know you were gonna be here at Dinosaur World. I took you here. You're right. To meet him? We have something to say. Listen, Buster. <laughs> You show me respect. Dinosaur World is a park with over 200 giant dinosaur statues covering the grounds. It's the first of three locations in the country, but is this place even for kids? You see this display, what is even going on here? This is absolutely not appropriate for children. I mean, what is that thing? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Dinosaurs got that bulge. Yeah, it's like their fupa. They have paleontologists here. Yeah, we could. I'm okay. not gonna. I'm not gonna ask the okay, paleontologist no, here. We could no. legitimately. We ask. literally are like not a weird question, but also kind of weird. What the f is that? And then they'd be like, "Well, I'm glad you f asked." It's like they wanted us to ask what it is. I think we should ask. That's probably what the pamphlet says. Dinosaur World. Find out what this <laughs> is. Finally, find out. <laughs> Biggest dinosaur question of all time. What the hell? <laughs> Believe it or not, but Dinosaur World Florida used to be another gator park called Gator Jungle. Don't look up what happened at Gator Jungle in Plant City in 1990. Six arrested, crocodiles extinguished, tear it down, build big dinosaur statues. On a nice day, Dinosaur World is like such a pleasant experience. Oh, my leg, my leg, oh man. And I learned after we went that you can bring a cooler and have a picnic. Next time it's not hot, I'm going to Dinosaur World for a picnic. Wow, you know, scientists never found uh, evidence that they actually butted their heads against each other. What would they butt? <laughs> wow, that's the, that's the question they're asking. Clearly the guys who question that have never been married. That's another, <laughs> that's, okay. <laughs> My wife humor. You, you were at Gatorland for too long. Turn up. Turn up for what? For this guy. This is Barney. That that is Barney. <laughs> I love you. You love me. Brad Looks like family. Baby Bob or AJ. You know uh, the Barney side characters. Well, uh, Baby Bob is green. AJ is, I believe, yellow. Well, I'm just talking about in terms of pure shape and raw energy. Oh well, uh, he looks like he's sick. <laughs> It was only $23.95 a ticket. Although the park does have additional ticketed experiences like the train for babies, the fossil dig site for babies, gem mining for babies, and putt-putt for babies. Look at that first hole. Man, these that's, are just like- pretty challenging. These are just like office putting you like. Like yeah. you could put this in the living I could put this room. in your bathroom, dude. This was my only disappointment with Dinosaur World. Dinosaur World should have the coolest putt-putt mini golf course. Like admission could be worth it just for putt-putt at Dinosaur World. However, I do have to add that the puzzle for babies was free. You think here? Let's drive. <laughs> you 
You did it! I'm joking. My, my cynical attitude is all a joke. This place is great for kids and we had a great time. And we overheard one kid just loving their experience. Bye-bye. But we heard another kid hating it for just like the funniest little kid reason of all time. She wasn't having a good time because she didn't know any of the dinosaurs. What a beautiful thing to have overheard and a funny reason to not like, uh, like, like dinosaur world. You mean you're being exposed to new dinosaurs? Yo, Brachiosaurus, no, don't hold it in. It doesn't work. It doesn't make you higher, Brachiosaurus. <laughs> we were given no trouble for any of our crazy antics. Oh, and we were so nuts. We were having a wild time for sure, running around, lying on the ground. I'm surprised we didn't get kicked out for having so much crazy fun. Savannah, run! Ah! Run from him. He's coming. There's a second one. Ah! There's a second one right behind you, right behind you. Ah! He's behind you. Ah! No, no, fight. You know, this guy owns the place. It's the most realistic creature I encountered that day. I thought it was my cat from home. I thought I brought him with me by accident. You will not get this at Disney. How did he get in here? Unfortunately, inside the museum, the living animatronic dinosaurs came to life and ate comic Drake right before our eyes. No. And right after he got his flattened penny. Rest in peace, comic Drake. Thanks for joining us. I'm sorry. He's like, yes, my invisible pet, I'll pet you. My invisible cat. Now, about 30 minutes northwest of Magic Kingdom, we find ourselves in the odd rolling hills of Claremont, Florida. This is the Florida Citrus Tower. It used to be featured on Florida license plates. I think they used to have oranges in here or something. I, I don't know what the name would be otherwise. Actually, Billy, an elevator goes up the Citrus Tower and you used to get a beautiful view of all of the orange groves that used to be here, but now it's like a view of parking lots and our next destination, the beautifully named President's Hall of Fame. I just love this name because I imagine like there being a president who didn't make it into the President's Hall of Fame in Claremont, Florida, mind you. But they're all here. When I'm president, I hope I'm good enough to get into the Hall of Fame. Outside stands a replica of not only the Lincoln Memorial and Statue of Liberty, but of Mount Rushmore. These guys all look like they struggle with reading and they're supposed to lead our country. First opened in 1964, the exhibit began as a wax museum and the figures have been left to melt in the Florida heat for decades. John Tyler looks like he's seen better days and like he's waiting for you to respond to his Snapchat. You know what kind of Snapchat. The space features a massive collection of presidential and White House memorabilia, some of which is original. Yet the main attraction is the miniature White House, which has gone all over the world on tour, receiving the attention of presidential families in the past. Discovery used it for stop motion scenes in a documentary about the changing interior design of the White House, which is kind of neat. Mr. President, it'll be my office one day. <laughs> I love talking to Tommy who ran the floor. Not only did he have a lot of insight into the collection, but he personally knew the founder of the museum, John Zwiefel. He was close with him and had a great time of recounting stories of his eccentric and difficult personality, including a time where John argued with the first lady over the color accuracy of one of his rooms in the model White House. He couldn't admit the photo he was using as reference had been like color corrected wrong. Also, they sat Savannah and I down and played like a PBS documentary about all the presidential pets for us. <laughs> the entire thing. It's like we felt too bad to get up. It was interesting for sure, but like, you know. <laughs> Did you know that Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, and George W. Bush all had spaniels? Like Richard Nixon picked out checkers and they were all like, that's the one. And like Lyndon B. Johnson, he, he held a dog like this and it was like horrible politically for him. And you wouldn't f***ing believe it, but they got Socks the Cat, Bill Clinton's cat for the documentary. It was all quite quaint. Some of the wax figures are very old and still stand representing an earlier time, but Obama and Trump are animatronics and stand together as an odd couple historically fated to be obsessed with each other. Trump used to move, but is now broken. But Obama still stares deep into your soul. Obama, over here. 
<laughs> Currently, Biden only has a paper cutout, but I know when they introduce a proper model for him, the lines will be out the door. Sure, Disney has their Hall of Presidents, but you're not gonna get an annual pass to the Hall of Presidents at Disney for $15. Did I mention our standard admission ticket was $15 and included an annual pass? So check out the Hall of Fame of Presidents. You just might see us there. <laughs> <laughs> 25 minutes from Disney World, we have International Drive, the home of Universal Studios and Orlando Proper's Tourist District. Featuring 11 miles of resorts, attractions, shopping and dining, funneling not only visitors from the parks, but from Orlando's corporate convention center hub. Land was bought up all around here before Disney World opened in 1971. And soon more attractions followed like the now defunct Wet n Wild theme park, as well as SeaWorld and later Universal Studios, leading to a another strip of tourist traps in discount stores. In 2005, International Drive was described as the Wild West of capitalism. But in the last decade, Icon 360, now Icon Park, has made the image of iDrive a little bit classier. Wow. Wow. All the colored umbrellas. It's so Icon Park. Wow. What do you think of it? What are your thoughts? I think I'm an influencer heaven. Oh. It was built by the owners of the London Eye who sought to create an iconic Ferris wheel for Orlando. You know, I've never noticed until just now that Orlando and London are palindromes. The Orlando Eye has since changed owners and been renamed to the wheel. I, I look like the wheel colors. But like the London Eye, visitors can package their experience with a ticket to Sea Life Aquarium and Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. Although Icon Park has all of these experiences under one roof. I'm sorry I lied about the palindrome thing, guys. But just for the Orlondon of it all, we chose to eat at Gordon Ramsay's Fish and Chips. You know, it was pretty good actually, but I don't know why I expected it to be bad. I don't know too many people who have done the wheel. I never did it because I have a big fear of heights, but for you guys, I'll own the sky. You mean this whole blue thing above is mine? It's pretty darn expensive to own the sky. $30 per person, and our drinks were $9. Bottles of water. Yeah, you know, we're drinking. Thank you so much. He's really important. Whoa. I'm not double fisting, I'm just holding Savannah's wine. I promise. <laughs> However, the wheel was pretty amazing. The spacious cabins hold up to 10 people and you can hook your phone up to the Bluetooth during the 15 to 20 minute ride. That's literally a game changer. This is so cool. I'm like so nervous, but this is so cool. We're in a little box. Like I'm truthfully terrified of heights. Yeah. Wow. This is incredible. Look, Jacksonville, we can see Jacksonville from- Oh my God. We're so high up. Hi, Jacksonville. The interior is nice, but quite frankly, the views from up here are unremarkable. The theme parks are neat to see, but they're at a ridiculous distance and a good view of downtown is blocked by the highway. Look, everything's becoming a toy. Whoa. Wow. All of those are now toys. I like, I like toys. You do like toys. Okay, this isn't so scary. Yeah, see, Billy? I, I get it when you put it into infantile terms like that. This is the part of my height anxiety where I get angry. <laughs> wow. That's your Lego set? That's my Lego set, yeah. The parking lot, the views of the parking lots are insane. They're amazing. Speaking of amazing, you're doing amazing right now. I'm not letting go. Ooh, you're having a little sip, it'll help. Maybe. I've had a couple. <laughs> and it gave me confidence to stand up and look around even though I was 400 feet up in the air. You gotta show me. You're standing up. I'm standing up. I've become, oh, there's water on the outside. We're so high into the atmosphere. Condensation is on the windows. Cause it's so cold out there. Look at these parking lots. This is yeah. literally, that's 90% of Orlando is parking lots. I've gotten over my fear of heights right now. Next time I'm high up, it'll be a different story. <laughs> I'll be scared. I'll never do that slingshot though or these 
in swings. Nonetheless, Icon Park looks really nice. Going to Madame Tussauds, I realize the idolization of celebrities is a powerful force, and it's one that I'm not typically intimidated by, but like, coming in here, yeah, I'm intimidated. These are the icons of Icon Park. But at Madame Tussauds, they're not so scary. You can get as close as you want. <laughs> Wax museums are some of the most artistic shitposts on the planet. These began as a tourist attraction in London based on the work of 18th century wax sculptor Anna Marie Tussauds, and these museums exist in major tourist hubs around the world. It's like I know them personally when I'm here. Why'd you do it, Ezra? We had a fun time, but for $32.99 per ticket, just to take selfies and silly videos with celebrity replicas, I can't see myself going back of my own suggestion. Our photos were expensive too. Icon Park does this awful thing where they print the photos before you buy them. Are you gonna throw them out if I don't? I've lost the receipts, but they were like 40 fucking dollars for both the wheel and Madame Tussauds. But I had to show you. Hey, scan this QR code. What wax celebrity would you kiss? I, I mean, take a picture with. Mm -hmm. On iDrive in Sand Lake is the biggest McDonald's in the world, featuring a still audible but not moving Mac tonight. And exclusive menu items like pizza. I won't talk about this one too much because I did in my non-standard McDonald's video, so please go check that out. Let your imagination run wild, that's the wonder of Wonderworks. Dude, hurricanes here are just like the worst in the world. Wonderful. <laughs> Why is this building upside down? I couldn't even tell you. Your eyes do not deceive you. That building is really upside down. There's character lore. The building came from a tornado made in a weather machine built by Professor Wonder. But the real lore is in 1998, John Morgan of the law firm Morgan and Morgan opened the first of many Wonderworks locations right on iDrive in Orlando. Going through the doors, we came upon a spinning light tunnel which flips you upside down to explore the upside down Morgan, building. Morgan, Morgan, Inside Morgan, is an Morgan, entertainment Morgan, center Morgan, Morgan, offering Morgan. video games, laser tag, a ropes course, ride simulators, illusion installations, and science inspired activities. This is my controller hand right now. Like, right. Yeah, that's oh, it's technique. literally what they're doing. You have control. Oh, I need a game to tell me that. It's like a children's science museum meets a Dave and Buster's. Like I've seen the assisted pulley at the Orlando Science Center. For an adult ticket, it's $36.99. Giant light bright, Google map screen, hurricane simulator, wh whatever the f this thing is. This thing wasn't even working. They they need to log back in. Morgan, this place Morgan, is a Morgan, sensory Morgan, assault Morgan, Morgan, and a cramped Morgan, space Morgan, and very Morgan, overstimulating. Morgan, Morgan. I feel like this plush inside this machine. Let him out. Oh. Free him. Free them. Oh, uh, hello, Mario. Mario's dead. The good thing is about this place, aside from the arcade machines, the price of admission is all inclusive. The bed of nails is one of the more memorable experiences. I haven't seen this anywhere else. Shouldn't they sanitize this in retrospect? Your weight distribution will protect you. You just have to trust it. It didn't hurt and I wasn't afraid of the gator at Gatorland. Overall, because we didn't play laser tag or do any of the simulator experiences, I do feel like we kind of overpaid for Wonderworks. I wasn't interested in going back until I learned they do like after hours at a cheaper price. Feels like less people would be there and it might be a fun time to go and try out those silly things. Okay, so while working on this video, I kept interchanging the names Chocolate Kingdom in Chocolate Museum, not knowing they were both two separate places, both on International Drive. What is that? The unknown. The Chocolate <laughs> Kingdom is located by the Orlando Convention Center, and it delightfully surprised us right from the start. It smelled amazing inside, and they had live cocoa trees displayed in the store. When the tour started, our excellent tour guide, Cynthia, pressed play on a video that was supposed to ground us in the world of the Chocolate Kingdom. We knew we were in for something special when this animated short began Began, starring a prince in a green mustache dragon named Michu. And this is my trusted friend and companion, Michu the dragon. Hola. Unforgettable. Ah! 
As soon as this video started, Savannah and I were immediately more excited than any of the children at Chocolate Kingdom. Like those kids, they're gonna forget about this until they turn 30. And, and then they're gonna remember it and be like, what the fuck was that? Was that real? Like if you see this as a child, you don't remember this as a real thing. It felt like the first secret we discovered going to these places and I will not be showing you much more of the video as to preserve the mystery. Both the Chocolate Kingdom and Museum Tours break down the history and process of chocolate making, but the Chocolate Kingdom was able to grab my attention with the history lesson a little bit more since we were given samples of roasted whole cocoa beans and other ingredients used in the chocolate making process. The Chocolate Kingdom makes their own chocolate and have their active equipment in the back, along with the Chocolate Kingdom, a miniature display with a flowing river of chocolate. It looks like it needs a refresh. Without spoiling much, because of the story, we had to catapult marshmallows into Mishu's giant mouth. They made a giant Mishu. Mishu is the ugliest character that I've ever fallen in love with. I love him so much that I scanned him at 300 DPI. A custom chocolate bar the tour came with was an extra $9 on top of our tickets that cost $18.95, which made it a bit steep, but the chocolate was delivered on a conveyor belt and was pretty good. But we bought a whole bag of cocoa beans. They were like dusted in sugar and cayenne pepper. They were so good. Now the chocolate museum is located closer to SeaWorld and features a much more robust front cafe. We just ate here out of convenience and I do think that's representative of what will happen to people while trying to do a lot of activities in the area. The food was solid, the espresso was great. While the Chocolate Kingdom had a much more engaging look into the process of making chocolate, the Chocolate Museum has a really interesting collection of historical chocolate making tools, along with a really interesting collection of vintage chocolate bar wrappers from around the world. The Chocolate Museum does not make their own chocolate, but they take pride in curating interesting, high quality and ethically sourced chocolates from around the world, which is very cool in its own right. The second thing the Chocolate Museum takes pride in is its chocolate sculpture collection, which I've seen featured in several roadside guides. Look at these chocolate expressions. She has such a great attitude. Hey, that's Willy Wonka, right? And of course, chocolate Mount Rushmore, because we've seen a lot of things twice today. If you pay extra, you can enjoy a wine and chocolate truffle pairing, which is pretty great. Here we are at the chocolate and wine tasting. But by the time we had them, we were pretty chocolated out. With our Groupon, it was only 1980 per ticket, which included the wine tasting. So it was definitely more of a value than the Chocolate Kingdom. And we got more chocolate included with our tour. But there is something special about the Chocolate Kingdom's home made small batch chocolate and this guy. Like 192, iDrive has been the site for a lot of high hopes and investments that have failed. Like both the Hard Rock Vault exhibit and the Guinness Book of World Records experience stood where Icon Park once was and things like the Skull Kingdom, a haunted house experience has also closed since. This thing called the Whirly Dome is what originally made me wanna do this video like five years ago. I got to play bumper car basketball which was like the wildest experience ever, but it's no longer there. And outside of iDrive, the Holy Land experience bit the dust not too long ago, which is another thing I wanted to visit while doing this video. Experience Jesus. You have been forgiven. But back on International Drive, the Festival Bay Mall once opened to try and compete with the Orlando Premium Outlets, but it was a dead mall as soon as it opened. Ownership exchanged hands a few times, and now zany investor Michael Dezer has purchased the place as a way to write off, I mean showcase, his $250 million car collection. Deserland, which now inhabits this once dead mall, doesn't seem to be bringing in much more traffic than a dead mall but maybe I'm wrong. Like Fun Spot, it's free to enter, but has attractions and activities like bowling and go-karting to make money. We did one game of mini golf during this experience at the Putting Edge. It's a glow-in-the-dark putt-putt course, which was around when this place was still the Festival Bay Mall. 
The game was really fun initially, and we got to request a song on the auxiliary. But soon, I realized the worst thing about this place is the air conditioning. I wore the same shirt outside at Gatorland, but after being in Deserland for a little while, I had swamp ass. The air conditioning in Deserland sucks. The next attraction, the Auto Museum, was pretty expensive to get into for what it was. Typically, it's pretty steep for standard admission at $31 per an adult, but we found a Groupon and paid $22 each. The car museum uses most of the mall's space. It was hot and the layout was disorienting. It took us through backroom spaces and honestly made the collection feel pretty unremarkable. There are certainly cool pieces in this collection, but the wow factor of the cars is completely diminished by the awful displays that have little cohesion between them. Low resolution art, bad photoshopping, and cramped spaces. This is a poor display for a $250 million collection. It's too cramped to see and appreciate every vehicle. The ones I would be inclined to be interested in weren't able to be appreciated. If it isn't a tourist trap, it's certainly a locals trap, except for the car with big boobs. You can see that at the entrance without having to pay. Just a tip. He's like a ship like icon. You yes, know, but on a like car. A, like a mermaid. <laughs> As a sort of local, I have not met one person who's been to Deserland and felt like they had a like cool experience, you know? Like the 007 restaurant. I've always wanted to eat at the 007 restaurant. And you know what? If it's not for you, it doesn't matter anyways, because this place, it's not for you. It's really just a place for Michael Desert to store his cars. They don't care if you're having a good time. Your entertainment is secondary, which just cannot be the case on iDrive, unless you have money to burn. It's like, look at this guy. That's the cat we saw at Dinosaur World. It was just him. It was a nice day. It was hot. I can't imagine what it's like when it's hot outside. Guess what? After Deserland, we were so excited to go to Pirate Adventures, a dinner show, an adventure. We paid $133 for the both of us. And when we pulled into the parking lot, we checked our tickets and saw the show had been canceled. I called their customer service, but nobody answered for like 10 minutes. So I sent like three separate emails over three separate days and I've been like reading through their policies, but they do warn you that they might cancel the show last minute. And you should call 24 hours ahead of time to make sure the show's not canceled. That's not how works pirate adventures we got no notification that the show had been canceled we will not be getting refunded but it's been over a week since i've sent these three emails over three days and i almost don't feel like going through the hassle we had a scheduled show time if that's canceled it should be notified and refunded because i i'm lucky to like have another chance to go but a lot of people they travel here you can't anticipate having to reschedule something like this when you're only going to be here for two or three days so i hate to say it but i do think pirate adventures is a high risk of being a tourist trap i would love to see it still anyways y'all this was amazing Amazingly fun. We would love to keep doing videos like this in between working on all the other stuff we're putting out. We're still working on the final part of the Lost Retrospective, but we're also looking to launch a new, like, nostalgic toy channel. So please look forward to hearing more about that. If you've had a good time, why not subscribe? See ya.